And uh, so I'm, I'm just like you guys, I've had issues, okay? So part of my story is I, uh, when I was a junior, I was a really successful baseball player. <coughs> Angel and I are from the same town. He's an amazing wrestler. I was really good at baseball, so he knows a little bit. Um, and, but I woke up, and I don't, I don't think you knew this, probably before me, me sharing with you, but um, I woke up uh, in the summertime. It was, just, it was just before playoff baseball started. And my right arm was, it felt like it was engorged with blood. It felt like I'd lived, like, you know, you see commercials with guys that are just pumping iron and they're eating, like, a Snickers. It felt like I'd lifted weights for, like, four hours. And I woke up the next and I couldn't move my arm. It was just like, oh. And figured out that I had a blood clot in my right arm. And that's scary. It's like, you know, my mom was freaking out because we're thinking, obviously, what? That I could die, right? Yeah. That's your thing. You go to the absolute worst, scenario, uh, worst case scenario, and long story short is I um, ended up going to the medical doctor and they figure out I had a blood clot and it was um, impinging by my first rib. And so they tried to dislodge the clot, couldn't do it. So that was disappointing. And so when I played baseball, we were in playoffs, I'd wear a white sleeve. And it was a compression sleeve that was helping, helping the blood go back to my heart. You know, praise God that <laughs> can't go back to my heart. That's helpful. And um, I ended up having my first rib removed from my side. And so your first rib sits about right here. So if you guys can kind of touch it on yourself. So it's like right where it starts to curve towards your like rear traps are, right in here. And you know, it's kind of important. It's like, you know, some people it's like, you know, you don't need an appendix, uh, that doesn't do anything. You don't need your pinky toe, but it's like when you lose these small things, <laughs> you realize how important they are. And so my, I've had a lot of neck issues. And thank God that my, um, that everything was good. Um, fat, uh, flash forward. Uh, towards chiropractic school, I learned that it was something called thoracic outlet syndrome. So TOS is what we call it. It's where the first rib and muscles and just everything gets so tight that it impedes the uh, venous return to your heart. And so that's what it was. And I didn't realize that chiropractic could help. Um, learned, later found out there's actually like 95% of cases can be resolved um, specifically through, you can adjust the first rib, but just having good um, good spinal hygiene can really help to take that pressure off those those arteries. I don't know, we can't go back in time to this figure out if that would have helped, but I wish that I would have known that. I wish that would have been something in my life to say, hey, you know, you should go see a chiropractor like immediately, because that's, I would have done that, and I would have been, you know, all out and imagine if I didn't have to have my first rib removed, you know. I really, you know, pray, I'm like, oh, I really wish I could have that sucker back, because <laughs> um, it would, you know, just make such an impact. And so, um, remind me at the end, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish that story. So, Bo, your assignment, you to remind me at the end, to sure. fin finish the story. Got it. Got to add the positive twist on it, so. Okay. Um, and so, we're going to get started. So, health is a family ordeal. So, here's my lovely family, and then many of you know it's a plus one. So, I'm going to get to the plus one, um, Amelia. But, yeah, my wife, Megan, and then Theod and Andre and Timothy. So, um, t uh, they were just 10, so they just turned, uh, in January, turned their birthday, so 10, 7, and 3. Timothy looks so mad. That's just like his normal look. It's like, it's just like, not trusting the cameraman or something. Uh, but this is a pretty fun picture, so everyone was looking at the camera. That was, that was a minor miracle. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we've really taken the tools that we're talking about, we've really incorporated it into our family because from when they're really young, so uh, when my son was uh, three months old is when we actually started getting into chiropractic. And so it's really been a family ordeal. They've experienced it, and, and even though we're probably annoying them by you know, reminding them to do things, you know, like chew your food, and all these things that I think are just you know, essential to having good health, I think they'll appreciate that when they're older. I think they're gonna hear my voice as they, <laughs> they grow up and, and to hopefully have good memories. So here's Amelia. Aww. And I just thought that was so cute with the yeah. finger in her, in her mouth. We have three January babies. Yes. One November and three January. Yep. Uh, January 6th and January 20th. That's when you're going to be the brokest. <laughs> I know, it's like right Christmas. And, I know. A lot of birthdays. Yep. So, yeah, blessing to have her. And then, so here is, I would say this is the epitome of the. the uh, conflicting sides of healthcare. Many of you have experienced this. So the first one is crisis care. Is that me? <laughs> is that, is that me? <laughs> so yeah, we all have crises, right? We all have that kind of that reaction, you know, the sympathetic response where we're like, oh my goodness. Unfortunately, this is not a good way to live your life, right? Living a fight or flight, running from a bear, 
if you're if you are really ill, you know, if I if my heart wasn't going to get the blood, it's really important I go see the doctor, right? I mean that I'm gonna I need some sort of surgery. Thank God we have those surgeries. Um, but unfortunately, most people only go to the go to the doctor when your body breaks, um, or address your health when you're sick or your body has failed you. And then eventually, what you do is we blame, you know, especially nowadays, we blame everything on germs and, and genetics and illness, and it's always everyone else's fault, and it's and it's out of our control. And so we're left with this very powerless feeling of. You know, you hear it on TV, on the radio, from, from everywhere around that there's nothing you can do. And so I feel like I'm, you know, why I'm a chiropractor, I wanna challenge that mindset because I've experienced health and I've seen other people experience good health um, through this model, the true healthcare model, which is, is basically investing daily. So it's the micro routines of every day that are really gonna get us to the point where are gonna reach our health goals, um, addressing, and I think this is probably a good summary, addressing your health within your daily routine. And so, you know, for me to be a good baseball player, if I'm not practicing hitting line drives every day, I'd be deceiving myself to think I'm gonna be a good baseball player. Oh, why can't I hit? It's like, why don't I pop it up every day? Well, it's because you don't ever practice hitting the ball on the line. So the same is true with our health. If we're not investing it uh, every day, you know, we're, we're kind of foolish to think that we're actually gonna experience the fruit of good health. Um, unfortunately, we think that, um, our bodies do heal. That's the, the most uh, amazing thing is our body do heal, but part of it is like we brush our teeth, right? We brush our teeth every day. Well, why can't I, you know, tell your dentist, why do I have to brush them every day? We all know that, right? It's kind of like, well, of course you do. You eat every day. You do these, you break down your body. We need to be resting. We need to be doing things every day that are going to help heal our body every day um, so that we can enjoy quality of life. You know, that's inevitably with my family. Like, I joke with my son, Mike's son. He's 10 and he likes to compete. So I'm like, son, when you're older, I'm gonna be able to run faster than you. He's like, no, you won't. Like, oh, I will. And so it's kind of this like fun, competitive, like like I wanna be as, as strong and robust that I can when I'm older so that I can do the things that I wanna do. Um, and the same is true for you guys. You guys have health goals. Some of you wanna avoid certain things. Some of you wanna have positive goals. Um, so if we're gonna do that, there's five areas or like a recipe. So if you're gonna make something, you need a recipe, you need some tools. Um, in general, how I want you guys to view health. So it's like, what is good health? I want you guys to view health through the lens of communication. And a good example of this is, um, actually just happened today, but we, uh, we live in a townhouse and there's a dead spot in our house. Um, it, but it's a perfect uh, place to talk with people without kids being extremely loud, okay? But it's, it's like, besides the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's like then the core doesn't fit it's like you're like um, it's not long enough and so talking with a friend today it's like you're and he's like I can't hear that or what and it's like kind of frustrating because I'm trying to have the, I'm trying to feel heard and he's like I can't hear you um, and the same is true of your body is your body's always trying to communicate you know if your um, if your blood sugar is low it's going to it's going to communicate to you and say hey dummy eat something, you know, or you haven't eaten, oh, I forgot to eat. Or if, if you touch a hot burner, your body's gonna communicate with you. Some people actually touch a burner and their nervous system is, is they have an issue with sensory deprivation, they can't feel it, so they actually have a problem and it's, it's really bad when you can't have that feedback. Um, so the, go the goal is to think about like a cell phone. Is it the phone? Is it the towers? Is it the where you're positioned? And if you could figure out what the problem is, then you we should probably move closer to town, or we should get a new cell phone, or I should move out of that little corner and go upstairs and, you know, lock my kids in their room. <laughs> That's, you know, so let's figure out, let's figure it out, right? Um, so, the, so five areas, your mindset. So most people believe that, you know, our bodies are dumb, they don't work very well, we need drugs and surgery. Um, neurological, so that's what you guys are experiencing, the specific chiropractic adjustments, nutrition, uh, movement, and then we're going to talk about how to get rid of toxins. So the first one is um, just your mindset. So when we're thinking about, you know, when we take that first step towards um, accomplishing a goal, most of us, you know, it, we don't even want to start. We don't want to set a goal because it's, it's you know, if we start and stop it, we're going to feel guilty. So most of us don't do it, right? Um, I'm the same way. I don't want to feel guilty, um, but there's a you know, 100% is the easiest percentage. Fully committed so that you don't, so you can avoid guilt 
Um, so if, if we can just give it our all, and so even if we fail, we can say, you know, I gave it my all, even I failed, um, we don't want to have regrets. Um, the more committed we are in one area, the more we're going to commit to other areas. So it's going to, it's going to spill over. So if you're committed in one area, you're just going to naturally, you know, um, if you're coming to the chiropractor, now you're going to think about your diet, and then you're going to think about this, and it's going to be a trickle effect. That's just the way uh, humanity is. Um, and then just matching your goals to what you're doing in your life. You know, I want to be a really good um, baseball player, but I'm like never ever practice the ball. You're kind of naive. Like you should actually, your goals and your time should match up. Um, and then thinking long term, what do you want to be said of you when you're 50, when you're 60, when you're 70? And then kind of backtracking and saying, well, in order to get there, I need to do X, Y, and Z. Um, and then we'll fail. When you fail, I think 80% is an A. And 100% 100 of nothing versus 80% of something, right? That, or 20% or of something is better than 100% of nothing. Um, write, write your goals down. They should be measurable, time sensitive. I found, um, you know, talk to people about it. Um, limiting beliefs. So this is, I mentioned, it's genetic, which there's a, something to play, but generally, I, I believe we blame everything on genetics when I don't think there's necessarily science to back it up for everything. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Um, my, then there's just a strong mindset. Well, have you heard of epigenetics? Epigenetics are, you're basically, um, can turn on or turn off certain genes and our lifestyle can actually uh, affect those genes. And so that's why lifestyle is so important. Well, I knew a man, I should, I should go back and forth, so I knew a man who smoked and drank and till, lived until he was 94. So what, I mean, I can just live however I want. Well, <laughs> imagine how long he would have lived if he didn't smoke and drink. Or imagine the quality of life he would have had. Imagine his kid, the, gene, the genes that he gave to his kids. Imagine how different that would have been. Um, well, I don't have time to exercise. And this is all, this is me too, right? This is, well, how can I incorporate movement into my day, right? Because it's like, I don't have time to go to the gym, it's so busy. Well, how can I do stuff at home? How can I do something just easy? You know what, Dr. Dr. it's just too expensive to eat, eat well. Eat organic, it's just too expensive. Well, this is a question I ask myself, okay? <laughs> Am I wasting money in other areas? Am I going out to eat? Am I, you know, cable subscription? Um, getting coffee, getting all these things really add up. Um, it's a budget uh, buster. Um, and I say, could I have a garden? Because I have a garden. Um, that's a great way to save money. I'm just too tired. Well, what can I do to recharge myself? Because I need to be my best on Monday, so what am I going to do Saturday and Sunday to recharge myself? So, mindset is huge. And then get to the cause. So, when you experience pain, when Derek experiences pain and he tells both me, oh, my back hurts. And it's like, well, what'd you, and, and Derek does a great job of asking the question because he, he, you know, he's thinking about his bed. He's thinking about, do I need to get a new bed? And that's a great question. Um, instead of just going, well, Dr. John's not really helping me. You know, it's like, well, he's thinking about what can I do? He's, he's kind of that empowerment mindset. <clears throat> How's my spine? Oh, I'm fatigued. Well, how am I sleeping? Did I sleep well the last couple nights? Well, no, I did and I was up with my little girl. I'm a little fatigued. Well, that makes sense. You should probably go to bed early, not watch something when you go home, you know, prioritizing that. Oh, I have a headache. Well, how am I handling stress? Inflammation, I just feel so achy. And am I eating well enough? Is my diet on par or up to par? Um, I just can't think straight. I have brain fog. Well, am I taking enough breaks at work? Um, and a good question to ask yourself is why your body's not healing? And I feel like if people could just get it and uh, connection with their body and figure out just because you guys know your body the best, right? I know it second <laughs> um, And so just figuring out how do, how, how do you respond to symptoms and circumstances will invariably determine where you go in life So we all have we all have junk. We all have things that happen um, If you don't mind Seth Seth is he's we uh, we rock climb together right now He's dealing with some muscle imbalances. So he's do, he's he's figuring it out and he's like he's he's actually more intense than I am with this I'm like I thought I was intense. He's like, I think it's the sartorius muscle. And I'm like, wow, you were like going for it. And I love it because it encourages me. Um, but he's asking the right questions instead of just going, well, you know, I'm getting older. That's what happens. You know, let's just give up. You know, he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to figure this out. <laughs> you that's know? our mindset. <laughs> and that's what we're, t and I hear it all the time. It's like, 
you know, if you're 30, you can't say that, okay? Like, that's illegal. You can't say that. I'm getting older. It's like, you're only 30. Okay. And you never have any of this? Um, sleep is so important, you know? Sometimes we're out of our minds because we're not sleeping, and we're like, what is, why am I anxious? And it's like, well, maybe because you didn't sleep very well. You know, you, you slept four hours, and you're wondering why you're out of your mind. Um, some keys to uh, quality of sleep is you want it dark, right? Sun is up during the day, sun is down. Um, I have an eye mask, um, and it it's works wonders. If my wife wakes up and has to go to the bathroom, turns on the light, I don't see it. Um, don't eat three, three hours prior to bed. So, like, you, you, need, you need to be healing, not breaking down food, you know? How many of you have eaten before bed? Right, and you always regret it. I mean, honestly, right? You, you're like, man, that was not worth it. Um, Go to bed before midnight. Just I, I would say 10 or 11. Ten, that would be um, so you just because it works with the sun. Good sleeping position. Um, I would say on your back with your head, you know, not to your, towards your chest, but just a nice relaxed position, or on your side with a pillow support would be really good. Left side is really good for lowering blood pressure. Um, some sort of like noise to drown out sounds. So you're not hearing the neighbor's motorcycle or their <coughs> in your house. Um, cool temperature, like 66, 67 degrees is a good temperature so that you can just snuggle in and just relax. And it actually helps your nervous system to settle down too. So your brain will actually stop racing. If you're warm, like most, most guys are warm um, when they go to sleep. Some guys sleep with their window open. Are you warm? It's got to be cold in there. Yeah. How does that work for you? Not good. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I've talked to Derek about taking cold showers, have I? Okay, there you go. Do it. There you go, take a picture. Um, yep. um, so take like a 30 minute, or thir uh, 30 second to two to three minute. And then you go to bed and you're just, you'll be, you just, you just trust me, you'll, you'll love it. And you'll sleep really well, you'll sleep deep. So alarm clocks will have light, you know, certain lights, uh, the moon, close, you know, shut, shut your blinds, should, should be blacked out. Um, if you're stressed, you're not gonna sleep, I mean, if you're thinking about you'll be up all night, the be better thing to do uh, would be to get up and just do something. Low light, just get up and um, don't sit there and just think about everything on planet Earth, under the sun. Um, don't eat bread before bed. Don't be a night owl. Um, have a sleep routine, you know, if it's reading, if it's talking with your spouse, just have a routine so that, you know, because you need a plan for sleep. And if you, uh, um, you fail the plan, you'll, you'll plan to fail. And then having a good diet that is high in potassium and magnesium, that, that helps things to relax. And that's gonna be really important. And there's the fail of plan. Okay, so chiropractic. So chiropractic is my expertise, and I love, um, how I got into chiropractic is obviously Bo's gonna remind me to share the story about you know transformation and all the positives, but you're, I really truly believe that your nervous system, um, outside of just the, the adjustment, is, is, is vital because in order for you to hear me speaking, you know, your brain is working. You know, some people actually can't. There's a neurological processing condition they can't hear. For your lungs to breathe, for your heart to beat, for every cell, organ, and tissue, this, this needs to be working really, really well. So you have your brain, your spinal cord, and then you, that's the CNS. So CNS, central nervous system, and you have your peripheral. And so for me, we work a lot with the central. And, you know, basically figuring out exactly where you need to be adjusted. Um, and a lot of you have, you know, long-term misalignment which is causing neurological irritation. Um, here is a good picture for you. So this is what I normally deal with. So we start top to bottom. So we have that neuro neurological interference, you know, neck pain, super common, headache, sinus. Um, and I'm gonna read through all these. Uh, first, this is C, so if I'm ever feeling here, C1, and then this big one back here is two, and then three. Ears, eyes, nose, and throat. Immune system, vision, ear, infections. It's super important to have a proper curvature in the neck. Cervicals four, five, and six. Neck pain, carpal tunnel. Um, I've experienced carpal tunnel-like symptoms with my first rib, not fun. Um, and then also thyroid issues. Um, this is a big one. A lot of people have, this is where they carry their stress. A lot of you carry your stress here, okay? And you're gonna have upper back pain, shoulder blade, um, from either sitting or standing too much. Um, you'll have respiratory. Um, I was talking about someone. Someone didn't believe me that I, that it would help asthma. That could potentially help asthma. There's other triggers to asthma. 
but just because it helps to dilate the lungs, helps to get blood flow to the lungs, super important. And then five through 12, thoracic. So we have cervical, thoracic, and then lumbar, hips, and then the triangle bone here is your sphincter. Um, your detox, your liver organ, acid reflux, and then other digestive issues. Uh, my mom actually got rear-ended um, by a bus, and she had a T8 issue, and she had developed digestive issues. Now, was that from the T8? I can't prove that, but it's definitely, if that's not working, if, it's, if the spine is not properly aligned, you know, don't be surprised if you have those issues, if you have issues in, in those nerves that are connected. Then you have lumbars, you know, sciatic low back pain, feet and legs, reproductive and digestive. And this isn't, like, it's not claiming like, oh, if you just, I have digestive issues, oh, just, you know, T8. But it's more about figuring out, you know, for your body, where where is the inflammation, where, and then how can we correct that, and then obviously we follow up on that to see how it is affecting your digestion. And I pick to practice Gonset method. So some for some of you, it's kind of like, it's, it's a technique. So there's many different ways that you can adjust the spine. I picked the onset because of how specific it was. Not as many people do it because it takes a lot of extra training. It's kind of like you're always, I mean, it's not just like when I come and see you guys or when you guys come and see me, it's like, I'm basically doing an exam on you every every time you, I mean like, um, other chiropractors, um, they do things differently and that's fine. Um, but for me, I decided that I wanted to be, you know, among the people, that, the less people, uh, percentage of people that do the concept method. Um, and so I'm always learning, you know, I have, I have my, my training notebook, I'm always learning, and, and some of your names are in the book, because I'm like, how can, I, how can I adjust Karen better? How can I adjust Joel better? Oh, this worked really well, this didn't work really well, because I, w I want you guys to always be improving. Because um, you're different, you know, Joel's different than Derek, um, and, and each visit needs to be unique in that way. And so we talked about this, um, so here's the phases of degeneration, and so, this is just normal, right? We all age, we all, um, things break down. And so that's why you're seeing me, so that things don't break down so that you can move, you know, move in this direction. Um, repetition of adjustments is, is huge. So it's like going to the gym, you know, if you, if you go to the gym or brush your teeth once a week, you know, you're not gonna get the results, so that's why it's the, the intensive phase because you're going to get serious results. And that's what I see the best results, and that's, uh, we wanna move you from Wherever you're on the right, we want to we want to keep on moving you that way, making those daily choices, getting reg, uh, regular adjustments, so that you you can experience you know proper movement in those joints. Um, we're going to talk about lifestyle stuff. We're doing re-exams to figure out you know how, how I'm doing, how you're doing, how we can do better, how you're holding, um, looking at uh, retaking X-rays to see how we did. You know how is your spine um, changing. And then, you know, you guys are part of the equation. You know, if I'm adjusting you, and Joel, he does a lot of remodeling. If you're, you know, you said you were like looking up the ceiling, and obviously that's like actually really bad. Like C1, that's like really bad for C1 too, because, and that's a lot of people have like really strong C1 and 2, like, it, like the muscles around there are really strong, but they're compensating. And so for him, if he's, if you guys are messing up, if it's one step forward and then two steps back, you know, that's why it's a 50-50. And, and all of you guys are have been great, so have been rock stars. So, um, and then wellness. Why uh, my, my chiropractic journey started when I was uh, uh, 21. My son was three months. That's when I started, and I my son gets adjusted regularly. Typically, it's every other week for them. Um, but yeah, we live it. We live it out, and we believe in it. So breaking bad habits. So here we have some examples. So sitting in your car can be really really bad for you because it's usually bucket scoop it's your butt scoops into the seat and it's just awful they were made for like safety but not for they weren't made by chiropractors obviously <laughs> you know um, when you're lead, you know in your leisure just avoiding positions that are compromising bending over you know that's that's kind of captain obvious there like he's just his his uh, his lumbar is rounded and so we're gonna do a couple exercises to show you how to move properly. And this is what I do when I'm loading the dishwasher. My wife, you know, she comes and she likes it. You know, she likes that I'm like, you know, she thinks I'm giving her a show. And I'm like, honey, thank you very much. Thank you. You know, but she knows that's just that's just what I do. You yeah. know, I just I'm like, you know, loading the pl oh, we gotta move the hips back there, get the plates back in the. Um, this guy, that's that's a bad oh. And then what happens is people pick up the pen, you know. Oh, I just, all I did was pick up a pen 
and then my back goes like, well, sir, well, ma'am, you've been doing that for 20 years. The pen wasn't the problem. It was the previous, you know, thousand times you bent over, million times you bent over to just, you know, in that compromised position. And then these are kind of self-explanatory. Um, having more of a erect posture like that if you're reading, having your head up. Uh, so I want you guys to stand up. Um, this, this honestly, would, would change your life, okay? Krista, you'll hear about this from Dr. Megan. Um, this is seriously, I've been doing this, Seth's been doing this for years too. And there's two things I want you to focus on. So I want you to get, I know some of you, maybe you have. I have heels on. Okay. If you want to or you don't have, you, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'll be careful. Them. Okay. But you're going to want to, so I really overdo it. So two things. So I want, so touch the front of your, um, your hips and then kind of like a telephone. Like you're talking on the telephone, and then underneath your ribs are here. And then I want you guys to take a breath in, hold it, don't let it go down, and it should be going up. And then hold it, and then another one. Feel your back kind of like your rib cage stretching. Do it again. Okay, next thing, I want you to not bring your chin out like this, like we mentioned, like Joel's looking at the ceiling. You want your chin in like this. Okay, start flexing your butt muscles. Hold this, hold this, lean forward, flex your butt. Are you feeling it? If you're not shaking, you're not doing it right. <laughs> My butt's shaking right now. <laughs> <laughs> and and then I want you to come here. And then I want you to bring your arms up against. Keep that, maintain that. Hold it for 10, maybe 20 seconds. See if if Bo's not shaking, we'll hold it for 20. <laughs> and keep that chin tucked. Okay, and come back. Do you feel in your back, feel in your butt, feel in your hamstrings? Everyone? Joel? Yeah. You did? All right. Derek? Yeah. Feel it? So there's, there's a, a chiropractor actually that uh, developed foundation training. Um, he's right, uh, his name is Eric Goodman. And it's all about how to move properly. And so we're adjusting, we're getting your body more stabilized. And then, so this is a good exercise to help you to maintain what we're, what we're getting in the office. And there's actually a, there's 11, 12 minute video um, that he does, and he does more than just the, this is called the founder. So it's about the foundation. But um, you could either do, you know, some people, or some uh, patient was doing, he would do like three, uh, a founder in the morning, at, before work, during work, and then at the end of work. Um, or some people just do the 11, 12 minute video, and it's powerful. Like, it's, every time I do it, I'm like, I need to do that every day. And I'll do it like three times a week, and I'm like, it's just, you feel amazing. And you just feel the right muscles are working. Um, so I'd encourage you to check out, to write down foundation training. So you guys can have a seat. Got it, I'm making you guys work for your food. <laughs> okay, so everyone wants to talk about the diet, okay? I'm not gonna give you a diet like, um, you know, key, I think key, probably keto is probably the most popular diet. I actually really like the keto diet. Um, there's a lot of positives to it. Um, some people probably shouldn't be on keto. It depends on the person. Everyone is so metabolically different. Um, so you want to make sure um, that you can, <coughs> that's another conversation. Um, really, your diet is about being satisfied. So how many of you eat so a serving size of ice cream? Like half a cup. Joel, <laughs> have you ever done that? Much. I can't eat too much ice cream. Okay, well, who eats ice cream? <laughs> Derek? Okay. No. <laughs> Do you want to eat a half a cup or do you want to eat the whole thing? Uh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> because it's not very satisfying. Because <laughs> it has nothing good in it. You know, it's just like just empty calories. The goal is you want to be satisfied. That's why fat is super important because um, I actually learned this recently. Fat actually stays in your stomach longer, making you feel satisfied more. Um, it also helps with um, uh, just hormonal um, versus being addicted to sugar. Um, how old your food is? Did it come from, you know, South America on a trip? You know, they picked it, you know, two weeks early, and it wasn't even ripe. And then they nitrogen fixed it so that it would turn ripe. And then, and it's just like it's important that we know where uh, where our food comes from, and then how old is it? That's why you know get connected with a farmer, a CSA, you know, with your beef and chicken. Know where your food comes from. Um, and this is the fat versus sugar. So um, typically, we're addicted to sugar, right? It's 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 like a drug. It's worse than cocaine, actually, in rats. Um, rats would choose 
cocaine, or I mean, would choose sugar over cocaine. Wow. You know, so that's that's pretty serious, and that's the that's why we eat a whole, an entire thing of ice cream. So incorporating more fat into your diet is is going to help your brain. It's going to help your nervous system. A lot of your brain is cholesterol, um, and it's going to help just things fire better. Um, skip breakfast. So this is intermittent fasting. So all it is is not eating for a certain amount of time. And it's, I would say this is equally as popular with the keto. And why it's popular is because people are experiencing such amazing health benefits. Like I, I've been doing this for uh, six, seven years. Um, and I love it. I'm not trying to lose weight, but people that want to lose weight can do this because your body is actually going to access your fat stores. Instead of eating carbs and then exercising, you eat nothing, go exercise, and your body's gonna utilize the fat stores for energy versus the food that you just consume. It's extremely powerful. Chew your food. So, you know, you can see all these are just basic principles. So, are you looking at Derek? Yes. Okay. Yeah, this is this is what our family dinner, like daily routine. All right, let's chew our food. You know, it's like, <laughs> not three times. And so we have a contest sometimes, especially if we have, if we ever have like spaghetti or something, we'll have a con, like, and my son will try to beat in this contest, he'll try to chew it over 100 times. Because spaghetti <laughs> is hard to chew, pizza is hard to chew, because you just want to swallow it immediately. So it's like, all right, who can chew the most? <laughs> so chew your food, then your stomach has to you know, break it down less. <clears throat> Don't drink too close to meals. So your stomach is supposed to be acidic. People that have digestive issues, um, and they're drinking uh, too much neutral water, neutral is like seven on the acidity alkaline scale. Um, if you're having meat, drink water like half an hour before, um, or wait like an hour to two hours after you eat before you consume uh, liquids. That's just gonna give your body enough time to utilize the nutrients, break them down, and then absorb them. Um, potassium. So, in my studies, like you know, we never it wasn't like a huge thing in school, but potassium. Foods that are really high in potassium. I, if you look at all foods that are high in potassium, they're like man, they're just amazing for you. Um, so I really try to get a, a diet high in potassium because it helps to regulate um, water uh, fluid balance in your body. So edema. So when I'm feeling your spine, I can feel edema. And uh, some people that will switch from like a higher sugar diet to fat, they're actually the inflammation will go down. And I think it has to do with the inflammation, but I think it has to do with, with this. Foods high in potassium and magnesium. And so here's a list I got for you guys. There's way more foods, but an avocado keeps it, an avocado day keeps the doctor away. Not an apple day, okay? Um, and then lima beans with chardonnay, corn squash. Spinach is really good. Uh, le green leafy vegetables are great. Sweet potato, salmon, coconut water is great. It's a little higher in sugar, but it's a good to replenish you. You know, if you're working all day, or Derek, you're working all day on your feet, like coconut water is gonna really help to, to replenish you. So then, we, so we talk about diet and then movement. So when I adjust you, you know the goal is you go out and do what you want to do, right? Um, and so here's a picture. This is almost looks like a painting. This is me in Colorado in August, and it's a, just an amazing picture. Um, and so it's all about movement. It's not about exercise. So people are like, oh, gotta go to the gym, gotta go do you know mundane, boring stuff. The goal is just to get movement. You know, you can get movement. The, the ladies that are working here tonight, they're getting movement. You know, they're probably extremely tired. They don't need to today. You know, they could take the day out. Um, you're going to strengthen and stabilize. So, uh, people that are really physically active when they're on their intensive care plan, I find that they get better results. I know that I did. Um, I was this when I was 21. I was actually um, doing painting, and um, I was getting three times a week, and I never felt better in my life because my body was able to move. The disc uh, doesn't um, get nutrition through your heartbeat. It was excreting bad stuff, getting stuff good, uh, good stuff in. You know, my body just never felt better. Uh, um, figuring out what what you enjoy for exercise. My my wife loves to go to classes, and she just figured that out. So now she's going. She good. She does a dance class. She loves it. And I'm like, you go, girl. Like, go for it. Like, for me, I don't need to go to classes. Um, but here's some examples. Um, I rock climb. Um, I love to go for walks, body weight exercise, posture exercise, that's what we just did. I don't like to swim, high intensity. <laughs> I, used, I, I used to be like pretty jack and I, I would sink. I'm like, this is no fun. <laughs> um, 
running, mini trampoline, uh, chores, you know, doing chores around the house sometimes is exercise. Um, this is a big thing. Sitting all day, you can't overcome. If you're sitting all day, it's really hard to go to the gym and think that you're going to correct a lot of the things. Um, moving intermittently. So if you're sitting all day, getting up every, I think every 10, 15 minutes and doing like something intense for like a minute, I think that would be, um, I think some people said like every hour and like, like, I can't sit still for five minutes. Um, so just move throughout the day. And if you don't move it, you'll lose it. So you have to keep moving. When I interview uh, older gentlemen, like I'll see them at the gym and I'll say, hey, what's your secret? Because I'm like literally like, I don't know everything. I want to hear from you and they'll go, you know what, just keep on moving, just keep on going. And I'm like, do we know it? And I hear that off, I hear that phrase often, just keep on moving. And so part of the adjustments is if you get in pain, what you do is you stop moving, you stop. And then eventually it affects your muscles and then it can affect your organs, it can affect the rest of your body. And so the goals want to keep you in, a, in good condition so that you can do what you love, keep on moving and keep on experiencing good, robust health. And then the last one is removing toxins. And so this is, you know, when we're talking about the reception, you know, this is like something interfering with proper communication. It could be, you know, there's a big steel beam there or, you know, there's something that's not allowing that signal to go through. Um, avoid the dirty dozen. So this is like every year they come out with like, what's the crappiest vegetables you can eat? It's like, <laughs> that's conventional. It's like, here you go, here's the list. Um, typically you think it's like things that don't have a thick skin. Um, things, certain things aren't sprayed as much. Uh, we'd be interested to, to go look that up for 2020. I haven't done it for 2020 yet. But you guys should consider, because I think potatoes, I think I always think of potatoes are one of the worst things you can buy conventional because they just spray the crap out of them. And it's like, it's and typical. And it's instead of organic. Yes, instead of organic, yep. yep. I just heard that almonds. They oh, really? spray pesticides all over the almonds. So when you're drinking almond milk, you're drinking all this. So if you need organic. And it's killing all the bees, too. Yeah. Yep. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. I never thought that. Yep. Um, tap water. So tap water has a lot of pharmaceuticals, chlorine, fluoride. Um, and actually, you absorb more chlorine from your shower. Uh, from your shower. So because um, your skin is, an, is, a, is an organ. It's a... It's one of your biggest organs, and it absorbs a massive amount of chlorine. I think a 15-minute hot shower is like eight glasses of chlorinated water. Um, you know, science behind that, that might be just, you know, how can they prove that? But it's, it's your body, your skin actually absorbs something. Um, it's a living, it breathes, you know. Um, and then this is just, it's not, it's not about organic necessarily. Knowing where your food comes from, knowing how it's, and that's why the organic label, it's becoming worse and worse, uh, standards. Um, um, removing toxins, just moving your body, exercising, Sweating, you know, when, uh, if my if my wife Megan ever is sweating, I'm like, and she'll kind of go, oh, I'm sweating. I'm like, yeah, like, you know, it's a good thing, you know. You know our women should be sweating. We should, you know, we should, if you're pitting up, good. Like, you, your body was meant to sweat, <laughs> unless you're giving a talk, you know. It's like, like, put some deodorant on. <laughs> but um, sweating is fine. Um, sauna is amazing, especially in the wintertime. I would encourage you, if you have access to a gym in the sauna. Do it. It's going to help your immune system to activate, sweat out toxins. You know, you really don't get your body temperature too hot, uh, too warm in the winter time. Some really amazing foods for uh, helping your body uh, its own natural detoxification process are a lot of. Uh, these are called brassicas: uh, the Brussels sprouts, cabbage, um, broccoli, uh, garlic as well. Garlic is really powerful. Sauerkraut, berries, chia seeds, uh, eggs. Um, a lot of these foods are high in uh, a compound called sulfur, so sulfur is really good for helping detox. And then 100% grass-fed meats. Um, and then fasting. So fasting is just taking a break, giving your body a break from eating, you know, um, steak or you know, it's like if you if you're gonna eat, if you're not fasting, feast. You know, be eating food, be. But if you're not gonna eat, it's gonna give your body time to cycle. And usually when I fast, for I usually do like 16 to 18 hours. 18 hours. I'm, some days I may be like, okay, I need to eat, but I usually feel really level-headed. I feel clear-headed. Um, I feel really good. Energy is great. I don't feel like I'm, I could go work out and be fine. Um, it's a really powerful strategy. And then um, apple cider vinegar, creating a really acidic stomach. It's going to help kill pathogens. It's going to help you absorb minerals. And I'm kind of going into like the sciencey stuff, but like, 
you know, drink two ounces or drink a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar with um, four ounces of water. Um, it's also going to help you balance your blood sugar. Helps to kind of bring it more to normal. Uh, extremely powerful. Um, so here's here's my garden produce that I want to show that off. <laughs> Seth gets to see my garden every year. <laughs> Pictures I'm like Seth, Seth. Here's my seeds. Seth's like he grew up on a farm, so he's kind of like. Cool job. <laughs> so here we got some turnips. We got some golden beets. We got some uh, some red beets. Uh, no more turnips. And then we got some cucumbers. You know, you guys have seen this before. Um, so I like to th I think about my health as like a, an HF say. So every you know every time you're getting adjusted, every time I adjust you, I'm thinking investment, investment. You're investing. You're putting cha ching cha ching cha ching. And you're going to reap the benefits if you if you're in it for the long haul. Winning the lottery, you'll ne you're not going to win the lottery. I'm sorry, you're not. No, you know. And if you do, let me know. <laughs> but you're not. You're not going to win the lottery. So we have to think of how we're going to invest our time and our energy and our money in a long term approach so that we can reap the benefits when we're 60, when we're 70, and you really will reap what you sow. Um, so let's be sowing good things and and then obviously reaping good things too. Um, beyond pain, so uh, typically chiropractic is all about pain, and that's fine, you know, like, it is about pain. Getting people out of pain so they can move, they can do what they love, but thinking about what's, what is the pain, what's the indicator like really saying, you know? It's not about just covering it up, it's about let's figure out what's going on under the, under the hood, right? Um, and I really believe that if you incorporate a lot of these, your life will be, never be the same. I know my family has been radically transformed. Um, you know, you go to Thanksgiving with other family members, and and you try to be, you know, try to be honoring towards them, but we, you know, some of our family are like, man, you guys are just weird and stuff. And then, then they see our kids, though. I mean, it is. It's like you kind of have to just accept. It's like, well, yeah, it's like, oh, well, we're not too home. good for <laughs> a bunch of foodies, you know. It's like, well, yeah, we are, but we still love you guys. <laughs> um, but. I really believe that your life will never be the same if you just, you know, a lot of times it's the small things in life. It's never really, it's, and there's a saying by Mother Teresa, it's um, doing, uh, doing small things with great love. It's about doing really, really easy things with, with uh, intention and that are gonna make the biggest impact. And for me, I'm like, I'm, I'm pretty intense, I have an intense personality, if you, I don't know if you noticed that, <laughs> uh, specifically about health, and, and I just try to do little things every day, um, and I just, I just feel so good, and I just my body responds so well. Even if I don't get a perfect night's rest, and um, it's just so fun, and I want to share it with you guys because I know that uh, good health is achievable. Um, I'm not special. That you guys, your guys' body is so it's God created so intelligently, is meant to hit, meant, meant to heal, meant to function uh, properly. And you have to be aware. Too many things. You, if you incorporate too many of these things, you, you're gonna have so much energy. You're gonna have like clear-headed thinking. You're gonna just be like, "Wow, I'm just so excited for life." So be careful, okay? And this is kind of an inside joke and a uh, dad joke with my, uh, my house. <laughs> I would be like, we'd, I'd make a really healthy smoothie or something, and my two oldest they understand it. I'd be like, "Hey, hey, don't drink too much of that." And they're like, "Be careful, I'm like, be careful, because if you drink too much of that, you may get healthy." <laughs> um, so that's my funny. So, and then I know, um, yeah, so I, I like to open up to people that um, are, so, so, the, a lot of people that, you know, didn't show up with the snow, but, um, you know, basically if you want to come in and, and um, special is $47, I know you guys are already patient, so, <laughs> um, $47 to get checked and to see how your spine is doing, I'd love to be able to help do it any way that I can, um, and would love to help you take responsibility and kind of get back on track with your health, so, um, Seth will um, come around and talk to you, and, that's what you're interested in. So, thanks so much for coming. And then, Bo, you wanted to tell me something. Yeah, and on a high note, dude. <laughs> what did I, why did you have it? <laughs> I actually remembered it. I actually was using it because I was like, I don't want to forget it. But, um, so, to finish the story, um, yeah, I had a blood clot in my arm and went to play college baseball and um, had labral tear, which is like a tissue in your shoulder capsule, and this just plagued with injuries. And um, through finding chiropractic, specific, and specifically guns of chiropractic has helped this so much. My, I don't have a blood clot in my arm anymore. Occasionally, if I'm like, maybe a really bad sleeping posture for a couple nights in a row, um, I'll have some sort of numbness and tingling. But in general, 
this, you know, even the muscle, muscle function was actually uh, significantly limited initially, but now I can do almost everything perfectly. And it's because not only the, the adjustments, specific in um, Dr. Kristen in our office adjusts uh, my T1 specifically, and it's just like so, it's so different. Every time I, I'm so grateful to, to be adjusted by her, and, um, and I'm able to throw, I can play catch, you know, and couldn't do that before. And so for me, it's been just, just such a blessing to be you know, getting chiropractic care, and I'm going to for the rest of my life. It's like, it's like going to the, oh, I'm getting my week, my annual physical. It's like, oh, well, I'm just getting my weekly adjustment because it's just cha-ching, 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 you know? Um, so it's powerful, so it's awesome. So thank you so much for coming. And uh, so we're gonna get some food and um, I'll just, we'll just mingle, so yeah.